Hello, y'all. What's up? I've been muted the whole time. I haven't been saying anything. Don't worry. Just wanted to make sure stream was working and shit. All right. <clears throat> so, the return of the Sea Smashies. 2023 we had like 37 people respond most of the responses are fine and all fine and dandy there were some hiccups here and there on my part but i'll get to them as i get to them i think y'all can see this just fine uh and i'll start in a second just kind of going through everything but i want to say that it's my first it's just my first year like actually really been in siwa and this shit was hilarious I mean, I the tab on the side on the slides. Luckily, though, I'll get to it. But uh, the first slides here are all uh, shit that wasn't on any of the surveys. Um, so even if you could read it, you wouldn't be able to like it wouldn't really be spoiling anything. So anyway, let's get the show on the road. This is a Smashies twenty twenty three. We had a bunch of categories. Uh, just like how it worked in the past, I'll only be giving the percentage. So like, how, what percentage of the votes everyone got? as well as the runner-up, except for the Hall of Fame and the first section. All right. So the first section we got is actually the Stats Awards. And so I wanted to put my bit of, a bit of flair into the Smashies, and I wanted to see just some interesting stats that were like going along, just like from 2023 and shit. And the first thing I looked into was the punching bag. Now, this was actually a submission from someone uh, because I took in like suggestions for like categories and so this is the person who has lost the most to peace and sin in 2023 and uh, Yeah, I mean that shit <laughs> I can imagine um, I found some really fun data though. So I'm just gonna get into it uh, the, t the person who lost the most of these two fuckers was actually lobby um, He really had a huge level up this year So it kind of just makes sense that he'd be the one kind of be being limited by them in like winter semis winners finals losers finals the most so, like, he would just be the one playing them the most. Uh, but the runner-up was Flash Freeze, and I think that no one else really came close. Up my volume? Up my mic? Oh, my God. Fuck. Hold up. All right. That sound good? Just going to wait on chat to say something. All right. We're good. All right. Anyway... Uh, so these fuckers have a combined like two and fifty eight on peace and sin, uh, because as I was counting, yeah. So Lavi actually got one win on peace, uh, back in and like the quarters is kind of confusing and shit, just because like in like quarter one is like the winter season, and then like in quarter four is like the fall plus like the, the one month of December. It's weird. Anyway, all you really need to know is that Flash Freeze beat Sin once, Lavi beat Peace once. But neither of them were able to beat, like, both of them in the season. So, you know, that's how that goes. All right. And then I wanted to look at, you know, in 2023, you know, who 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 are the guys winning tournaments, you know? Especially since we had so many new people come in, so many new people in the PR, a lot of, like, you know, chaining of the new guard, like, to, like from the old guard to the new guard. And we actually had quite a bit of, uh, of a bit of winners. Obviously, obviously, the top two are Peace, then Sin. Uh, Lavi had six wins in the end. I actually almost miscounted, but he had six. A majority of them were, I believe, in the summer season, which is like kind of his uh, peak. I think he got like third or something like in, in the PR. Uh, and then after that is Fish, who is like pretty consistently like year round. Like he wins about like at least one epoch a season, if not two. It seems to be kind of his uh, mojo. Artie, I think he won one epoch and he won a sour spot. I remember actually giving him his money for the payout for that. And I think he said it was the first time he'd actually been paid for a tournament. So that was pretty cool. And then through a lot of digging, I found, and I believe this is in like a rough order of like the tournaments that were won, but D, Brooks, Gucci, Barrio, Flash Freeze, Monkey, Ja, and Beanie all won a tournament each. I think for D, it was like a certified classic. Brooks won that one TCT without Peace and Sin. That was a fundraiser. Gucci won, I believe it was a sour, sweet spot. I forget. Uh, and then Barrio also won a sweet spot. Flash Freeze won an Epoch. Monkey won a sour spot. Ja won a Siwoo bracket. And then Beanie also won a sweet spot, I believe. 
and then I th <laughs> uh, here's the uh, here's here's that same list, but uh, winners when at least one of peace or sin is there. Um, as you can see, that uh, no one actually was able to win a tournament over either of them. Um, so just uh, in case you were ever like wondering about the gap between our top two and the rest, this is this is <laughs> this is what it looks like. <laughs> All right, and and then this is the whole thing. So you can see that like we actually didn't like until Brooks won that TCT. Uh, the only person people that had won tournaments besides like Peace and Zoom were D and Fish. And then with the rise of like the like kind of Walla Walla meta with like a bunch of house bracket and shit, there was the rise of like Lavi already got one in, Gucci got one in, and then like a good other people did too. So there's that. And then we have the lowest seed to win a bracket, which uh, this one is a fun thing because, uh, well, let's take a look. Uh, so the lowest seed to win a bracket is actually a tie between Brooks and Artie because they both won their respective brackets as the seventh seed each. Um, Brooks, I believe he like he like had just like upset after upset. I think it was like he beat D Barrio, Lobby, uh, lost to Lobby and Grands and won the reset or something like that. I, I don't remember exactly how it went. Uh, and then Artie, um, at this epoch, I remember thinking. That he was kind of a little underseated, and uh, that's all I'll say on that one. But other than that, uh, there's actually not a lot of low seeds that win tournaments. I could only find two people who won as the third seed, meaning that everybody else who won a tournament was the first or second seed anyway, which is kind of fucking insane. Um, but yeah, I mean. Kind of crazy. Not a lot of low seeds actually win our brackets, and we can kind of see why in the, in the from the other slides. But all right, now we got the David and Goliath award. Peace and sins worst losses throughout the uh, season. Now this went to for sin. It was kind of clear, and for peace, it was a little. I, I decided to put in two players since there was the low seed to beat peace, or or his worst loss in a. Just in general, you know, for to like a Siwa player, and then his worst loss outside of Siwa that I could find, um, or you know, within any of like the Siwa brackets. Uh, so for Sin, his worst loss was to Slain at Twilight Tales, and I remember this uh, gave me the unfortunate luck of having Sin round one um, at Twilight Tales. So uh, thanks for that, Slain, and that, that was actually an upset factor of five because I think Sin was like the like four like fourth or fifth seed or something like that. It was kind of crazy. It was also Sin's round one, so there's also that. For Peace, it seemed like his worst loss was to Rage at TCT set 27. I don't even really remember who... I don't really know who this guy is. I think he's on, like, 12th floor, which is, like, a Eastern Washington, Idaho group, I think. I forget. Um, but the lowest seed to be, to take a set off of Peace in all of 2023 from a Seawall player was D as the fourth seed. Um... And he didn't even win the tournament. It, it was like, like, and, and also, uh, Peace beat him twice. He beat him in winners finals and in grand reset, but that was the biggest upset. Uh, that, was the, that was Peace's worst loss throughout the entirety of it. So, yeah. Oh, shout out to Amnesia, uh, for the, for, uh, Sin's worst loss because Whirlpools aren't really seated. So I couldn't reliably, like, you know, infer, like, what seed he would have been in that, you know, it, so. Yeah, shout out to shout out to Amnesia or slash PZRT for that, because he also beats Sin. And that's it for the stats awards this year because uh, finding these stats was fucking insane and hard to do because I had to just like go through so many fucking pages and just like the even like I just had to limit my ideas to things that were like relatively easy to do. But I actually because of this I started a bracket page for the twenty twenty four year year long thing. So for twenty twenty four. It will definitely be a lot more interesting. One of them that I really wanted to do was like the most common like head to head or like head to head matchup between uh, two between like two players that wasn't Peace and Sin, um, because I would just have to like l count it through like five different like pages and like just like come through shit. So I'm not doing that. But now we get to the vote ins, and this is where it's out of my control. I've got no input. I put my votes in just like anyone else. There were 37 respondents. 
And so we start with the best local venue, with the nominees being the First Ave Center, which hosted Whirlpool and Iron Fist, and now Pasco Pummel, a uh, toy stable for Berg Bash in Ellensburg, the Hobby Lobby parking lot slash Passing Snails apartment that hosts Walla Walla Sweet Spot and the First Pumpkin. There's the Pasco City Hall Gym, which is the TCT venue most prominently, but also hosted the Bladeskin Bracket 2 this year. And then, of course, Epoch, which is Smash at Epoch. And I'm going to apologize to 3 Bar right now for uh, forgetting to put Epoch on, uh, on Best Venue in the Best Tournament Series, but uh, we're going to ignore that. Anyway, uh, it was kind of a wash for venue. I feel like everyone's really gotten accustomed to the little first half center, like even, even more so, it seems. Than a TCT venue. I honestly thought the TCT venue was gonna win just because of how long it's been like a long-standing, uh, like you know, like venue for everything. But, uh, yeah, if the first half center won. Uh, honestly, I feel like part of it is just like the way that Whip sets up like the tables and shit. It's just a really efficient use of space. Um, the decorations are fucking amazing from like the people that like are there in the daytime and like that the center is mostly for. Um, it's also the home to Iron Fist. I forgot, I don't remember if I put that down. Yeah, I did. Um, so they like the FTC part of like, uh, Siwa is, uh, you know, definitely like, you know, pro, you know it's, 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 it's a part of the, like, you know, like both sides of the, of like the smash FTC community here in Siwa. But yeah, like, so yeah, congrats to the first half center and I guess fucking whip for, I guess having good venues. Oh shit. Well, fuck. I might have spoiled it, but <clears throat> best tournament series. The nominees are Walla Walla Sweet Spot, Berg Bash, Whirlpool, Pumpkin for some reason, Tri City Tumble, Iron Fist, and Epoch. And yeah, I used this picture of Gaming Grog because uh, I remember like a mi- like a, probably a year before I joined, I think I saw like a vague advertisement for like Gaming Grog or something, and I was like, that seems really cool. And then when I joined to see why it just uh, wasn't a thing anymore, which kind of sucked. But I found this picture when digging through a photo album. But yeah, Whirlpool like fucking won. Of course, like, you know, it's the tournament that, like, has the most amount of, like, just insane shit happening because you see the most head-to-heads going on. Um, and Tri-City Tumble was runner-up. I think it was really close, if I remember correctly. You can see that there was, like, a pretty big gap there. Uh, TCT is, like, the classic, you know, like, mini-regional that we had for the longest time. Um, and then, you know, just, like, speaking for Whirlpool, like, you know, it gives you the most bang for your buck. And, like, there was also just a lot of, like, hidden bosses that, like, came out, that came back out to, like, just at least try out the format. Clip of the year. Wow. I wonder which of these three clips had is, is going to win. I wonder from I wonder which of these three clips actually uh was almost the pretty much the only nominee. Um yeah, so in the nomination phase, everybody said the fucking clip that won, and there was only one fucking like thing like one suggest one one nomination for the other two each and i was one of them who like didn't do the one that won but yeah like the fucking peace and sin one won obviously um yeah like it made it onto eat smash since then's pronounced uh synced according to the guy there um and the funny thing is that the runner-up was a snail and goo set and i don't even know if that vod exists anymore um and like i only vaguely remembered that shit so like I also, if I remember correctly too, the nomination didn't even say like that, like that how long the set was. It just said snail and goo goos, but yeah. Uh, and then you know, just in case you haven't seen it, Kazuya Mishima. How the fuck do I get to the next slide? How the fuck do I get to the next slide? Okay, there we go. All right. It's time to ban a player. Now, if me personally, I would have I would have nominated Noel, but I already had my nominations filled. But the nominees to ban are Kid, Monkey, Ja, Charm, and Mugen. Who has this really awesome picture that I found somewhere and I don't remember what the context for it was, but I just had to include it. But yeah. Like, who the fuck else were we gonna ban? And who else was gonna be like the second, like, you know, like ready to ban person? These fuckers are a menace <laughs> to society. 
we'll get into we'll get into monkey in a bit in a bit with some of the shit that's later on the line but you know you know you know you know it's one thing when like our consistent pr player whenever you post a graphic and add him on twitter it's like the main to just always tells people to not go there but yeah uh get him out of here all right who is our void who is the best multifaceted gamer in all of siwa our nominees are Joel Joestar, Alto, Superbottle, Lavi, Horus, and D. And I missed Volderic here, but forgot to fucking uh, overwrite that. But we move. And the winner is... Why is her bot my fucking thing? All right. How do I ban you? Ban. Anyway, it's fucking Joel. Joel is the GOAT. This man can pick up any game. And be absolutely good at it. He was undefeated Smash Boxer. Consistent top 8 if not top 4 in Street Fighter 6 at Iron Fist. 3rd out of 30 in Street Fighter 6 at Back in Blood 7. Multi-season Siwa PR veteran. I mean, this guy, what is there to say about him? That hasn't already been said. I mean, look at that picture. Glorious man. And then the runner-up was the newly signed to RD, Lobby. All right. Best out of region tournament. We had three nominees mainly, but also kind of just two. Because when I said this, I meant like a regional or like a major or anything. Um, but we only got nominees for these top two tournaments and also Hermiston hits done, which is like technically an in-region tournament because it's was part of CWA, but you know. Uh, and then Daddy's Den actually didn't get to go to. It was like the like it was a big tournament that happened like I think like a week or two before I joined the scene, and I kept hearing good shit about it. So that's one thing. And then Port Priority was my first major, so I'm happy to say that Port Priority won by quite a bit. Gyromite is the fucking goat for having a fucking P and W P tier tournament, having like people from all over the fucking world. There, I, it, there were so many top players there that I would con constantly run into someone, and um just like be completely confused or like just like be like oh my god like i can't believe that like they're like here like i didn't even remember that they were here um it's kind of the most stacked tournament in ult history it's it, it like it isn't numbers wise like based off like the algorithmic ranking shit but like come on like they're like it, that, that shit was insane um Somehow the crowd was cheering for both Mia and Sonics, which is kind of insane because those are two characters that do not get um, a lot of love. And then, of course, shout out to the fucking Airbnb. That shit was lit. Thank you, Scalar. And then also shout out to Danny's Den. As I mentioned, it's the other tournament that, like, was pretty big. And, like, it seems like it, it was definitely a staple of, like, C1, E1 until, until Cal's retirement. Rest in peace. All right. And now... It's time to find out who our timeout menace is. We've got Slain, Kid, Zark, Jaw, and Horus. And yes, this picture is from that time that D uh, timed out Slonics. But your winner, and I don't think it's really t too surprising, is Slain. This man was nominated by like the most by far in this category. He mains Game and Watch and Samus at this point. He talks about it all the time, like in Discord, just talking about how he's going to time people out. Um, but uh, Zark is a close second, and uh, I, I voted for Zark, because uh, have you guys seen how Zark uh, plays? Because uh, I actually didn't see Kid time out anybody until Zark timed him out to win. So, that's my opinion where to go, but the resident Game & Watch main... That's that's a pretty acceptable uh, answer for uh, for the, for the timeout menace here. All right, saltiest sweetie. It seems like in the past this was a bigger award, so I don't know how much emphasis I was supposed to put on it. Um, anyway, the nominees for saltiest sweetie are Astul, D or Derek, Sinsend, Charminator, and Four Eyes. And the winner is Sinsend. This shit ain't nothing to me, man. This game is fucking true. Like this, these are these are these are shit that he's, he'll say after he's out of bracket. Um, and since joining in March, I have seen three of his sets where with him that ended in the switch getting undocked. 
which were at like the first Hermes and Insta I went to, one of the TCTs and a, and Sundown. Um, but huge shout out definitely goes to D's fist bumps because I see that man absolutely knuckle crush other men without any any regard. I love both of them though. All right, best pop off. We got Sin, Peace, Bladesy, and Snail. And the win and and so I want to clarify that when I put this category down, I was kind of looking for, uh, like, you know, like like a moment, like like a like maybe like if it was recorded or something, it didn't have to be recorded. You know, it's like a moment where someone like popped off, but uh. No one submitted any of those, so I just had to go by names and just it'll go to a player. But the best pop off goes to Snail. And there was actually only one nomination for Snail, and all that it said was game four snail. Um I didn't realize they had this many shooters. Um, but they did have the most respectful pop off when they finally beat me, so I definitely give it up. And I feel like part of this is maybe maybe they popped off when they did that game four shit to Mondo. I don't I wasn't there. I was playing against Gucci. I was getting my ass handed to me in the other room, but uh runner up goes to peace. I know that he definitely popped off here and there. Alright. <clears throat> Friendly's Fiend. I actually wanted to do a stats award for who had pinged Friendly's the most, but the Discord shit was fucking up. And it wasn't counted them all correctly, so I couldn't do that. Uh, but our nominees are Kid, Laka, Monkey, Peace, and Flash Reese. And our winner was Monkey, followed up by Kid. <laughs> These fuckers. Uh, and also, shout out to Slushy for being the only non COA nomination in any category. He was nominated for this category, which makes sense. But yeah, these fuckers, these fuckers run Wi-Fi like it's nothing. All right. Biggest hidden boss threat. Now this one could have kind of been a turf for a bit since we all, you know, y'all want to respect like our players and we all want to say here, there, it's Carlos. Is that fucking Joy Boy? <laughs> anyway. Uh, but I, I wanted to, to specifically be players that was, uh, that, that have not made PR yet. Um, so there were some people that were on here that have made PR in the past and I didn't, and I figured it's like, they're not really a hidden boss if they've like been active enough to do that. So, but our nominees are Gex, Eri, Poyo Poyo, Nundi, Pearlescent, and Joy Boy. And the winner of our biggest hidden boss, Threat, goes to Poyo Poyo. And I want to say how insane this is, just like in a number of ways. This so guy shows up with a Kirby hoodie, a Kirby Power Ray controller, with the tag Poyo Poyo, and he'll rock your shit with Hero. At his first Whirlpool, he did go solo Kirby, I'm pretty sure. Um, and he still plays Kirby in some matchups, but he's effectively a Hero main with like the whole Kirby aesthetic. Which is, uh, we are now, like, I don't know, 10 for 10 on, like, people with, like, a Kirby tag um, who do not play Kirby. Like, we got Kirby Kid, we have Kirby Poyo 345, we got Poyo Poyo now, some other fuckers. Um, he also told me at Whirlpool 4 that it was his first offline bracket. He placed ninth, and he only, and he lost to, and he placed ninth, losing to Lobby Game 5 and Top 12 Losers Round 1. So... He's going on the sticks. I think he's. I think he, I mean, he might have since beat Lobby. I forget. He's had some really good wins though, and he did. And he's like did did really well in like the in the most in the last Whirlpool he was at. Um, runner up goes is Nundi, um, and I just found this insane stat while looking through his PG stats. Uh, he has a lifetime record two zero against Jr. And I know he's retired and shit, but and all that happened. But like, that's insane. And I believe that I'm pretty sure that like the that first win. That might have been at, like, Nundi's first tournament or some shit. I don't remember. All right. Now we got biggest upset. As mentioned earlier, Amnesia beat Sin 2-0 in pools at Whirlpool 2. 
Tyraz at Whirlpool three, his first uh, major, his first main bracket back it seemed, in a hot minute. He got wins on Keowulf, ISD, and Lobby Impulse. Pashi is up 2-0 in sets over Kid at the Sour Spot 10 and Pepsi V Coke. And then Kirby Poyo beat Beanie 2-0 in Losers Round 1 at Epoch 16. And the winner is... Tyraz with his wins over Keowulf, ISD, and Lobby and Pools. And, and this is just extremely impressive and I can't stress it enough how hard it is to make these upsets with an honest mid-tier. Um, and then, ironically, Tyrus's run was actually ended by Beanie here, who was a person upset in the last option for this pool. And also, I think it's, I think it's just still hilarious that Kid is, you know, 2 versus Pashi in sets. That's just, like, that's just hilarious. I mean, like, man, like, I just, you know, couldn't be me. But, anyway, moving on, we've got the most improved award. I mean, we've got quite a bit of people here. All right. <laughs> um, <laughs> we've got Capone, Artie, Matthew slash Cryo, whatever you want to call him, Tyraz, Fat Uncle Ben, Monkey, Charminator, and Mondo. And honestly, this is like a very specific phrasing. You know, it's like the most improved. So you would presume it's like, you know, the person who has made like the biggest jump in like Im improvement not necessarily the best, you know what I mean? It's like, it's kind of hard to like really gauge like how this kind of is since like some of these people were already pretty good and are just getting even better. But I think that the answers that we went with, I think they make sense. I think, and I, I think that like, honestly of the list, these two were probably the most improved, which is Artie and Matthew. Um, and here's a picture of Artie uh, winning his first tournament, fun fact. Uh, but yeah, for reference on a timeline of improvement, since joining in March, I handed Artie his very first pay payout at the Sour Spot 6, and he made number 6 on the PR that season. Um, and it seems like it wasn't even that long ago that he was still, like, really struggling with everybody and still being, like, a 0 2 -er to, like, 2 2 -er. Um, from what I remember when I met him, uh, he really put on, put in the, like, time to grind. And Matthew barely missed out on PR for the same season, uh, as Artie. He didn't go to much at the time. But then in the following season, he made number five on the fall PR. So yeah, these two have done a lot of improvement and some of our newer PR members. But yeah, I definitely agree with the fact that these two are probably the most improved at NC Wall. All right, favorite money grubbing TO. We got Whip, me, Pepsi, Goo Goos, Laka, and Three Bar. And the winner for Fair Tio was a fucking landslide. It was a fucking landslide, and I hate all of you. You guys gave 60% of the fucking vote to Whip? Are you kidding me? Did you have to make the gap that fucking huge? I don't even know what else to put here. That's what I put, like, that's what I wrote down. I said, I don't want what else to put here, because I don't want to feed Jordan's ego. Oh, right, but there's a funny story here. Uh, throwback to when Lightning Quiz 7 came up to me and thanked me for hosting Twilight slash Sundown, thinking I was Whip, even though I'm, like, a full foot shorter than him and a different race. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, everybody was just like, yeah, Whip is, uh, we're just going to suck him off for this one, even though he plays Sora. I mean, yeah, but runner up goes to me in three bar, little, little small town, small town heroes. So yay. All right. Next category then. Low tier hero. This one's actually a fun one. I really like this uh, category. We got Mondo, who plays Mewtwo and Piranha Plant. Followed by... And, and I was about to say, like, this was one of the most unfortunate, like, co-mains. But then there's Newt, who co-mains DK and Ganon. Uh, we got Fat Kid, meaning uh, We Fit. Noel, meaning Duck Hunt. Smart Guy from, I think, Ellensburg, meaning Jigglypuff or Siwoo. Is that Ellensburg? I forget. Um... We got Lavi on Dr. Mario, and we got Fat Uncle Ben on King K. Rule. All right. And it goes to Lavi with Dr. Mario, with the runner-up being Mondo, being on Mewtwo and Piranha Plant. And funny thing about Mo Lavi's doc is that he once told me that he forgets he even has down B. And prior to that, I thought that that was one of his best moves, but what the fuck do I know? Um, I also witnessed this man reverse 3 0 Kazuya sticking into doc. So he was down 0-2, but still stuck to the dock. Truly a low-T hero. 
And then, it, I think Dr. Mario is the worst character to consistently have, a, to have a consistent rep on PR. Um, I don't think there's any worse, like, like maybe Piranha Plant back in the day with, like, Wear Up, but, um, yeah, I think this is just the worst character to, like, consistently be on the PR. Alright, best random. The nominees for that are Monkey, Red Mute slash Product Mute, Lobby, Jaw, and Bladesy. And the winner for best random goes to Red Mute. Who is the only player in Sea to truly not have a main? Like even Monkey kinda mains Dark Pit and like Pyramithra. Uh George is like a box of chocolates. You never know what matchup you're gonna get. Um but the runner up is Lavi, and Lavi has the highest number of character contributions to the PR, I'm pretty sure. Like I don't even think it's close. I'm like you know what I mean? Like there's some guys back in the day who played like a fuck ton of characters, but like overall and after all this time I think Lavi's contributed the most to just like adding characters on there. But yeah, shout out to Red Mute. And then I just put these characters up because these are like kind of his mains if he were to have them, but even then it's like three characters. Anyway, best doubles pair. Um, we got Kid and Monkey, We Love Melee, which is Eel and Noel, Peace and Sin, Slain and Joel, and then Nomad and an actual toddler. And the submission for Nomad was just, like, Nomad slash literally everybody, but I thought that would be funnier. Um, but, uh, this was a funny result. This is a pretty funny result. Because, uh, <laughs> so Peace and Sin won with 27% of the votes. And then there was a three-way tie for everybody else except for I Love, We Love Melee. Um... Now, Peace and Sin are, cur are current undisputed top two players. That's obvious, right? I mean, it makes sense that they're, like, best doubles team. Um, on their first time teaming ever at Final Judgment, they took Mystery Soul and JDB to Game 3 in a best three before losing. Uh, and Soul and JDB placed second at that. Um, but uh, Rip Melee, they were off by one vote for a four-way tie, by the way. So, if just one more person had voted for them, then, uh, yeah, they would have we would had a four-way tie and every nominee would have been on this fucking thing. But yeah, kind of to peace and sin. And now we've got set of the year, which for some reason has monkey in it twice. Our nominees for this are E Dog versus Bouncing Fish at the Third Berg Bash in Winners Quarters, Lobby versus Monkey at Pepsi v Coke in Grand Finals Reset, and Monkey v Gucci at the Star Spot X Grand Finals. And the winner for best set of the year, or just set of the year. Goes to Lobby and Monkey at Pepsi v Coke in the Grand Final Reset. This was a Game 10 Grands plus Reset. This shit ended at like midnight because we did a crew battle for it. Um, and like until Game 10, these two these two players who are just nominated for like Best Random and are known for not playing mains were only like just counterpicking mains for like nine sweaty games. Like it would be like one of them would win a game, then like switch, and then like the next person would stay, and then like then after that they'd like switch or some shit. I don't know. That shit was insane. Um, it ended with uh, fucking all of us deciding that it would be mo most most fun if they decided to go random. And then uh, Lobby got Byleth and Monkey got DK. So kind of unfortunate, but it was close. It was a close set. And then, yeah, uh, Lobby was Team Coke and I think Monkey was Team Pepsi. So, uh, yeah, Coke won. Rip. And then the other two sets, they, they both uh, had the same amount of votes for each other, so. Most desired comeback. Our nominees for the most desired comeback are Fainblade, Bebop, MCATS, PM64, who actually did come back for one tournament, but it hasn't been, Joy Boy, Neos Pikmin, and Mimikyu. And our winner for most desired comeback is Bebop, with, I believe, winning by one vote. Um, and clearly, even though we have Matthew, we want Bebop, Bebop back, so the, the Smashers yearned for Lucas. Um, he was also the first honorable mention for a CWA PR season, which happened in spring 2022. Um, and I haven't actually met him. Uh, he seems like a cool dude. Maybe Chip Chat can uh, speak out more on him. They're saying, they're saying they love Bebop. MCATS is pretty cool. 
He got a lot of votes, potentially, from both Walla Walla and Ellensburg. Uh, and then just a fun stat that I thought I'd share with people. Uh, MCATS is actually 1-0 on Sin. Uh, he, MCATS actually traveled from, like, Idaho slash, like, Eastern Washington to Tritown Throwdown and uh, beat Sin 2-1. But yeah, these guys, both good dudes. Wish you wish wish y'all would come back. Clearly we want you. And now it's time for us to ban a character. So we already banned Kid, I think. And Monkey was runner up. So let's just see if we can get rid of them all together. And the nominees for character ban are Steve, Min Min, Kazia, Cloud, Rob, Bowser, and for some reason, Banjo and Kazooie. And the winners for character ban. Or Steve. I mean, yeah, it just makes sense. Fuck this guy. Every time one of you fuckers in Siwa picks his character, like, Siwa is just such as, like, is, like, nice to each other, but, like, because of it, like, you'll you'll pick Steve, and then you'll play it in, like, friendlies and shit, and you'll be, like, beating the shit out of someone, like, punching them in the face, and be like, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, like, I didn't mean to jank you at 20, like, oh, like, oh, I didn't mean to do that. It's the Subway sandwich meme, like, you made the sandwich. ARMS is also the worst Nintendo franchise, so, you know, it makes sense that Min Min is, like, a close second, but... Yeah. We're banning Steve. All right. Best side event. The nominees are HDR, Squad Strike, Doubles, Randoms, Remix Redemption, Hero Kamikaze Roulette, The Halloween Costume Competition, and Randoms. And the winners is a tie between doubles and squad strike with the runner up being randubs so like effectively dubs is kind of the winner since i feel like people are kind of just split between like doubles and randubs because they're kind of the same thing effectively they just the characters are different um whip asked where was crew battles if nobody nominated them whip then nobody fucking wanted them anyway TOs, take notes. If you have a doubles event, please let the players be able to name their teams because these, like, t the team names are fucking hilarious that, like, people come up with. Um, there's also Eel and Kid. Like, this, you know, this is just, like, something. I thought I'd just pointed out that, you know, they, they did this on another record, but mostly Eel. Uh, anyway, seems like doubles and squad strike, randubs. You can't go wrong with any of them. Uh, biggest highway robbery. We got th three nominees. We got game four snail, which is when snail at like 100% plus, I think, uh, dare spiked Mondo like sub 60% to steal the game and then win the set uh, at sweet spot. We got beanie at like 200%, like hitting slain with diamond F smash when he was at like 60% game five with like 10 seconds on the clock and he fucking lost. And then we got the uh, luck of the game 10 grand between monkey and lobby. A Pepsi v Coke, where they were peer pressured into rolling DK Byleth in randoms. Um, but yeah, if you were there, uh, clearly this shit won. That was the most insane thing. Let it be known that after this happened, Beanie popped off, got up, yelled, time me out next time. 10 seconds on time, remember? Um, and was happier than someone who had just won the lottery. Um, I was mid-set for Game 4, but the cra uh, Snail, but the crowd was very loud and clear. And yeah, the Game 4 Snail got... Got the runner up there, so shout out to Snail. We love you. Alright. What is next? Most drip. Hell yeah. Alright. The nominees for the most drip are Beanie, Tyraz, Horus, Goo Goos, Me for some reason, Red Meat slash Product Mute, Gucci Pucci, and Joel Joestar. Tyrus is saying it's actually Bebop. Well, you should have fucking nominated him. Anyway, the player with the most drip is Tyraz. If Tyraz ain't on the playlist, I'm not listening. This boy is just so damn pretty. I'm not going to make that noise. Uh, but yeah, the runner up is Beanie. I feel like th these two are like pretty dripped out. I feel like Beanie's always like got a fit on. Tyraz comes into Whirlpool just like looking clean as shit with his little box. Ari, I'm not making the noise. Uh, but yeah, shout out to Tyraz. You got the most drip in Siwa. Alright, and now we got character loyalists. Who's putting in the work with their character and really believing in them? Or characters. 
to like push them to their limits. Everyone knows about this major versus send upset where major two out send at Daddy's Den. I watched that VOD. That shit was insane. But the nominees for character loyalists are Flash Freeze with Toon Link, Spafog's Wario, Snail's Byleth, Gucci's Rob, Jules' Samoth, Charm's Snake, Laka's Rosa and Lena and Luma and Link, and Mondo with Mewtwo. And the winners is Flash Freeze. I didn't intend for this to like him being in purple and he also has like the purple alt, but that just kind of worked out. He was also the most nominated for the category initially. Um, all five times he has made PR, peaking at number four more than once, um, have been with Solo Toon Link. And then as for the runner up of Sofog with Wario, I do have to say that the concept of Sofog and Wario are eternally intertwined in my head at this point. At this point. I mean, like, that man just completely plays Wario. He loves Wario. It, it's, it's everything to him, you know? And, like, that man that man is essentially our little Gluto. I, I swear to God, I've seen that man rob some games on stream whenever I, te like, peep on the Epoch. But Flash Freeze, absolutely character loyalist. Shout out to him. Character horror. We've got Neos Pokemon, Warm Day Beanie, Red Mute slash Product Mute, Jaw, Monkey, ISD, Kid, and Lobby. And the winner for Character Whore is actually a tie because you're all whores. It's a tie for first place between Red Mute and Monkey, two players who don't really have mains. And then it's a runner up between Neos and Beanie, two people who do have mains but decide to be whores and pick top tiers like Steve and Rob. Isn't that funny? Uh, Monkey has won a bracket going someone else's mains also. That's kind of insane. And then Redmi just doesn't have a main. Um, and then I can clip the screenshot of Monkey with his like stupid character decisions. Where he like, you know, went Steve game one against Flash Freeze, lost, and then decided that Ness was going to work. And then it did. Like, I feel like Monkey is someone who like, uh, he's a character horror for sure. But like, he, he, he just decides like whatever's going to be, like it would be really funny if he won with those characters. And then he just kind of does that. So, you know, yeah, makes sense for this category though. All right. Now we move on to the final section of tonight, the Central Washington Smash Hall of Fame inductees for both 2022 and 2023. There's five for this. And I spoke to Super Bottle about these results and talked to a few others about stuff. Basically had a little committee pretty much um, to kind of iron this out and make things work. Especially because I might have forgotten to put Sin Sen down as a vote for like the first like six ent like response. And so, uh, yeah. But that being said, here's our nominees. We've got Four Eyes, Artie, D, Dr. Pepsi, Fat Kid, Gex, Gucci Fucci, Ja, Johnny Quantum, Lavi, Neos po Pokemon, I guess. How the fuck do you pronounce that shit? Since End, Worm Day Beanie, and Whip. And I'll, I'm not going in any particular order, except for the last one. But we'll get to that. The first new inductee into the Seawall Hall of Fame is Since End. And from that list... He's definitely the one that is probably the most obvious that he's going to get in. Um, he has been the number two player in Central Washington for nine straight seasons. And appears to probably be doing that and continuing that this season, as we hope. He is the only player within Seawall for 2023 to, ha to have had a winning record on Peace for a full season's ranking, doing so for two out of the four seasons. Tying for one season and losing by one set for another. He is the only one to have been able to match Peace 2's, well, yes, Peace's con competitive level of dominance and consistency within Siwa during these past two years. And he also plays on Vox sometimes, it's kind of cool. But yeah, I mean, like, what is there to say about Sin? This motherfucker, like, is cracked. He's the only one that's really, like, at that level, like, really at that level with, like, Peace. Um, everyone's really just saying that, like, once he gets his like out of region wins, like it's gonna like be like it's gonna be wrapped for everybody else, you know. Um, and really, like any season, I feel like 
he's a real threat to like take number one out, like from peace if peace isn't like you know continually practicing and like I just I really appreciate that like you know him and like peace kind of like put, like push each other like that but yeah pretty pretty obvious choice for uh, for Hall of Fame inductee but moving on to the next one to the next Hall of Fame inductee you've got four eyes four eyes is one of very few Siwa players who can say they have taken a bracket win over Peace. He was also on the very first Super Smash Brothers Ultimate Siwa PR at number five. Even after all this time, he still got it. Still adding to his roster, playing banjo nowadays, here and there, and still outplaying the majority of us. He also has a major Ganondorf seal of approval, where here at, I believe, Middle Ground, he was talking about his placements and then gave a quick shout out to Four Eyes saying that he almost beat him and that he's cracked. Uh, and uh, this is even more impressive considering that Forrest is playing Lucas there and uh, Major specifically is on record showing that he's like surprisingly really good against Lucas specifically. So, I mean, I feel like this is pretty deserved. When I first entered the scene, I'd heard all about Four Eyes here and there, just like people talking about him, mentioning him in terms of players that like were at that level that could like be peace and sin. But yeah. Shout out to him. And now, we move on to our third Hall of Fame inductee. Fat Kid. Oh, Skyler. At my first offline event ever, which was, I believe was TCT like 17 or 18. It was like right before TCT 19, unfortunately. I missed it. Uh, but at my first offline event ever, Fat Kid came up to me and tried to make me feel welcome as I was really nervous and didn't know anybody. I was, like, super awkward, but he just kept, like, talking to me and just, like, trying to make me feel, like, welcome. And, like, being like, hey, you can play, like, what really so, or just, like, showing me the general, like, smash etiquette and shit. He booked the uh, port priority a Airbnb ahead of time pretty off the assumption that it would fill up, and I'm pretty sure it completely filled up. He has sponsored or has offered to sponsor many players for many events. Volunteers for Pole Captain at Sundown Saga, T.O. of Hermerson Hitstun, which rest in peace. Uh, and he's probably the player with the largest combined upset factor in Siwa because he's, like, never made PR, so he's never quite hit that level where he'd probably get, like, a decently high seed, but he's definitely, like, take, get, had just, like, a number of PR wins here and there just, like, throughout the seasons. Absolutely insane. But, yeah. Fat Kid is our third one. So, so far, we've got Sin, Sin, Four Eyes, and Fat Kid. And now... We move on to something a little different. Since we had two top players in the TO, we've got a little bit of a mix of a little bit of everything, really. Um, as Neos has entered the Hall of Fame. Uh, he is the TO of Neos Battle City, which has 20 iterations to date. Uh, the Battle City series peaked with entrance at the 10th iteration, bringing in 36 players for a single house bracket even after effectively retiring from serious competition he still comes to tournament to see the boys he's still playing these days and he really helped to carry the aqua scene at the end of his time uh so much so that it seems that the scene might have uh maybe withered away a little bit in his absence but the reps from what yakima are still going strong that do come out and he's also, you know, our, our, like, our kind of our main uh, content guy at this point. So, yeah. And then we move on to the last guy. The last Hall of Fame inductee. And this one I saved for last because much like an earlier category, it was kind of a fucking sweep. And I can't believe it. But, uh more than anybody else and by a wide margin this was the person who had the most votes for hall of fame inductee he had like a third of the people vote for him as their first choice whip whip is the head to of siwa for hosting the most tournaments and the biggest ones at that sundown tri-city tumble iron fist whirlpool pasco pummel this man is just making new shit uh, he's always changing the rule set, adjusting to the current meta. His rule sets tend to influence rule sets 
the other TOs go by. I know, at least for me, like, when I was first running my bracket, that was just, I, I thought just the TCT ones would be standard for Seawall. So I just went by them. Um, he volunteers as pool captain for PNW majors and regionals. Um, and yeah, he had the most nominations and votes of any of the Hall of Fame inductees, having almost double the final votes of the second most voted person. But yeah, of course, it's with. I think it's what's really funny is that I actually sent a screenshot to TO chat of like the censored results showing like that someone just had like the most votes by far of like first, uh, for like, for, you know, first, like first choice for uh, Hall of Fame. And uh, Whip was like robbed again. And I was like, I don't know about that. But to get them all together, this is the Central Washington Smash Hall of Fame. Four Eyes, Fame Blade, Fat Kid, Hell Raid, Joel, Joe Star, Johnny SQ, KV, Neos, Peace, Super Bottle, Sin Send, and Whip. And I don't really know what's going to happen with this, I'll be honest. I remember just looking through some of the old posts for the old uh, CWAS Smashies. And uh, yeah, like uh, I remember Super Bottle was talking about how he wanted to do something with this uh, at some point, maybe make a graphic of some kind. Um, but we'll see. And I definitely had some ideas. I'm also, you know, doing the little Pepsi circuit, so that'll be fun. Um, did I make a slide for that? Oh, I didn't. That's funny. I meant to write down some shit about the Pepsi circuit that I was going to announce, like how it's now going to be 16 people. So construction crew on the 15th is going to be a two person qualifier and the LCQ will be four spots and some other shit, but we'll get to that. Uh, but yeah. And I think that these were some pretty good uh, selections for Hall of Fame. Uh, see what smashies will of course return in the next year. Um, I might even make add a, like another phase before the nomination phase where I have people submit their own ideas for categories you could vote on because it wasn't until I was like looking for stats and stuff that I started to come up with some good ideas for um, some categories we could have voted on but you know too little too late but yeah that has been your CUS smashies and I thank you all for joining me tonight I don't know what else to do, no, man, man. I think, like, Umabura is going on right now, right? Like, yeah. Wait, hold up. Yeah. Now we can, we can watch a major or something. I don't know. What is going on here? Oh, it's Min Min? Oh, never mind. Okay. Anyway, I have been your host, Dr. Pepsi. Thank you all for tuning in. And, uh, yeah, I, I will, I will post this somewhere, by the way, um, like in text format, um, somewhere like, you know, with all the results and shit, uh, I, pr it's probably just gonna be like a pacement or something, but yeah, so it'll, it, it'll like definitely be somewhere. I'll probably also upload this VOD to the CWOD like channel in case anybody wants to come back and like see this shit. Anyway, thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys next time.